Hello, I'm back again. Um, this video I'm going to focus on teaching and helping you understand the VF equals VI plus AT equation. Um, so let's divide this screen in half because I want to actually save that work for a little bit later. Because it will come in handy. Um, so what do we know? Well, let's say if I start at some speed and I continue to speed up from there, how fast do I end up going? Um, I'd say it's a, uh, a reasonable question to ask. Um, it should sound kind of obvious that the speed that you start out at plus however much your speed changes is going to be equal to the speed that you end up at, right? Whatever you start at plus how much you change is what you end up at. So if I start at 20 miles per hour and I speed up by 10 miles per hour, I'm going to end up going 30 miles per hour. Hopefully this will make sense. Um, but what is the change in velocity? What is this? Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, so let's not put that question mark there. Paint is stupid. Paint, you're ugly. I could have just pressed Control Z. Oh well. Okay. So, what is the change in velocity? What is this strange symbol that I'm trying to draw? Um. Well, it's kind of just like how um our acceleration times our time. Because remember, uh, acceleration is our rate of increase or decrease of velocity. So our acceleration times our time is going to be how much the velocity changes. Because acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing, right? How fast you're speeding up times how long you're speeding up for is going to be how much you sped up over that time interval. So how much you changed your velocity. So if we just plug that in make highlight that in green, if we plug that in right here, then all we just end up pretty clearly with VF equals this, the VI plus this bit that we have in green, this AT. And here we have another one of the um, the key equations that they give us to memorize in physics. So here I'll rewrite that all in one color. That's Vf equals Vi plus At. Beautiful handwriting, right? I thought so. So that is the second equation. So here, how about I s highlight both of these, square them off in some color. What is this? Sepia? Mango? I don't know. Um, so here we have the first two equations, uh, the first two kinematic equations done. Um, this one is if you have, you would use this one if you had the displacement, the velocity, the initial, the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the time, or uh, three of those. This one would be used if you have three out of four of these, the VF, VI, A, or T. Uh, and then once you have the three data, pe the pe three pieces of data, which you always will, once they give you that, um, you will just be able to plug things in and then use pretty basic algebra to solve for whatever variables left. One thing that you want to watch out for that they may not always tell you is number one, if they tell you that something's just being dropped, well then actually there's two things that they're not directly saying. For one, whenever you're on Earth, the acceleration is pretty much always in our case, whenever you're dropping something, the acceleration is, ni is negative 9.8. Remember the negative and it's, nine, it's the 9.8 that we keep on using. So they might not say it outright in the problem, they may not say 9.8, but you can assume it. So 
be careful that you realize that that is a piece of information that you know. Also, um, with initial velocity, if they say that it's starting from rest or something is being dropped, that means that the initial velocity is zero. So already, just by saying that you're drop, if they just say that you drop something from the top of the building, well then, already we know the initial velocity and the acceleration. So now if they tell us what this ending speed is, or how long it takes for it to reach the ground, we can solve for the other variable pretty simply. Um, okay, that video is, this video has turned out pretty, pretty quickly, that went by pretty fast. Um, so hopefully that helps you understand that equation a little bit better. Um, in my next video, I'm going to move on to the uh, kind of an ugly equation at first, but it should make sense after I go through it in, in the next video. I'm going to go through um, delta x equals initial velocity times time, vi times t, plus one half at squared. This is the one that you use a lot in the um, projectile motion, and that you'll use a lot in projectile motion. Uh, so I definitely want to help you understand this one so that way you can remember it. Uh, I'm going to make another video pretty soon. See you then.